I know you have seen a lot of videos about PC motor speed controllers, but most of them are based on PWM. In this video, we are going to learn a very simple, straightforward and useful analog approach, which is based on a weird fact about VJT transistors. Actually, this circuit is a general purpose current amplifier. In addition, we are going to learn more about transistors and potentiometers. Please stay with me until the end of this video. To control a speed of a DC motor like this one or this one, we just need to control voltage of its terminals. That's simple. The PWM method is one of the most popular methods to change voltage of a DC motor by switching it on or off quickly. Most of you know enough about it and its disadvantages. For example, it needs a digital and in most cases a complicated circuit along with other disadvantages. To avoid these defects, I am going to introduce a simple analog circuit that is based on a weird fact about transistors. These are components we need to set up a simple DC motor speed controller. This is a potentiometer, this is a transistor and this is a DC gear motor. We also need a breadboard and some jumper wires. Producing variable and adjustable voltage is a piece of cake. It can be done by using a single potentiometer. So I'm going to show you how to produce variable voltage by using a single potentiometer. A potentiometer might look like this or this or this. No matter, all of them are basically the same with a little difference. All of them have three terminals, the resistance value. The resistance between side terminals, I mean this terminal and this terminal, is called potentiometer's resistance. Look here, for example, this potentiometer is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. It means the resistance between this terminal and this terminal is 10 kilo ohm. Let's call the resistance between side terminals R, the resistance between left terminal and middle terminal R1, and the resistance between middle terminal and the right terminal R2. Then this equation will be true for all types of potentiometers. The exact value of R1 and R2 depends on the handle position. If I turn the handle clockwise, then the R1 will grow and R2 will shrink and vice versa. Growing and shrinking behavior of R1 and R2 cause an amazing feature in potentiometers which is used here in DC motor speed controllers, producing variable and adjustable voltage. If I apply ground and source voltage to side terminals, then the voltage on middle terminal will be variable between zero and source voltage depending on handle position. Let's do a simple experiment to better understand this feature. I'm going to connect 5 volt and ground to potentiometer side terminals and then measure the voltage on the middle terminal. When I turn the handle clockwise or counterclockwise, the voltage on middle terminal changes. It seems great, we have a nice variable and controllable voltage here on middle terminal and we just need to simply connect a DC motor there to control its speed. This is a common mistake. Don't celebrate too soon. This variable voltage can't light an LED, let alone DC motors. As soon as you connect the DC motor there, the voltage on middle terminal will drop to zero because this variable voltage can't provide much current. So what can we do with this variable voltage to make it stronger and more usable in DC motor speed controllers? This is a good question. What we can do? Yes, that's right. We have to amplify current on this variable voltage. Now you may ask how to amplify current on this variable voltage. That's not difficult. Next component will help us on this journey. Next component is Holy Transistor. 
A transistor is a three pin component which is often used as a digital switch. But it is not all of the story because transistor can amplify voltage or current too. This little and amazing component has three pins, collector, emitter, and base. The collector and emitter are used for switching voltage and current and the base is used to control that switching behavior. You know, there is a secret about BJT transistors that nobody tells you. Everybody says that this type of transistor needs a 0.7 volt voltage difference on its base emitter junction to turn on and this is completely true, but this is not all of the story. Actually, this type of transistor have to keep a 0.7 volt voltage difference on its base emitter junction at any moment. I mean, the transistor will do its best and arrange everything. I mean everything, even the current flowing from collector to emitter to keep the voltage on its base emitter junction equal to 0.7 volt at any moment. Assume that the voltage on collector terminal is 5 volt. In this setup, if you apply 3 volt to base terminal, you will get 2.3 volt on emitter pin regardless of the current flowing from collector to emitter. This is why in normal usage of transistors, we have to put a resistor on the base terminal to allow the transistor to pull the voltage on base terminal down. This is the weird fact about PJT transistors. They try to keep voltage difference on their base emitter junction fixed. And this is key point of this video and the concept we were looking for to make a current amplifier. You can apply a weak voltage signal to base terminal of a transistor and then you will get strong voltage signal on emitter terminal. The good news is that using this technique is not limited to DC motor speed controllers. Everywhere else you need a current amplifier, you can use this technique. For example, if you have a low current voice signal, you can apply the signal to base terminal of a transistor and enjoy strong voice signal on emitter terminal. Think about this simple circuit. A variable voltage is produced by this 10 kilo ohm potentiometer and applied to base pin of this transistor. It works perfectly. The transistor is doing its best to keep a 0.7 volt voltage difference on its base emitter junction by allowing or blocking current from collector to emitter. The transistor will amplify collector current to keep voltage on emitter pin constant. No matter the load on output draws how much current. That's all. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.